Now don't be afraid. Andy's okay. I'm his cousin Melvin. I'll be taking over the channel for a while. Well, yeah, no, they'll never buy it. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you once again. And if you're new here, this is the show that you've been looking for. If you want to hear all about the new Batman adventures, looking back on it 20 years later from the perspective of an adult having watched the show growing up as a kid in the 90s. So if this sounds like something you might be into, then click that subscribe button and hit like while you're down there because we've got a lot of great content coming your way, like today when we talk about Never Fear, which originally aired on November 1st, 1997. What's his story? Let's ask. An appropriate episode to air just before Halloween, and it actually it originally aired just the day after Halloween, and this is a show that brings the Scarecrow back in the new adventures, and I think that he's one of the villains that has taken on the largest change in the redesign, and we'll talk all about that right after our 60-second rundown of the episode. Here we go. Batman and Robin stop a man who is swinging through the city who lawn lookers think that it's Batman, and they stop him, and they find out that he has no fear of heights or falls falling and he gets away from them and it's just like the the man that works at Bruce Wayne's office who also has no fear of telling off his boss Bruce Wayne and as he leaves then he kisses Bruce's secretary and then we find out the scarecrow has developed a gas that is causing people to not have any fear at all and he uses this on Bruce Wayne who is undercover in disguise and he uses this on him now this removes Batman's fear of almost killing people or killing people and so when Batman and Robin go to stop him. Robin is concerned about Batman and his tactics now is almost going to kill people. So he ties him up and Robin goes at it alone. And when he's on his own, the Batman breaks free and runs after him and wants to stop Scarecrow at all means necessary. And, and just before he's able to kill him, then Robin uses the antidote on uh, Batman and cures him. And So use the antidote on him and together Batman and Robin stop the Scarecrow and then they go home after a little laugh. So close. We, we tried, but we had no idea your treatment would be that effective. So this story is really pretty interesting. To have the Scarecrow working in a kind of a roundabout, backwards sort of way by taking people's fear away rather than giving them their worst fears. So I like this new approach. And again, we've talked about it several times throughout this series, is that with the new adventures, they are kind of... Uh, the show is evolving. The characters are evolving. And here we have Scarecrow, who is dramatically different visually, but also his tactics are very different. If you watch any of my other Scarecrow episode reviews from the original series, you'll see that often my complaint is they didn't really know what to do with this character. It was always that he was using fear against people to gain a lot of money. And he really didn't have any great motives. But in this one, although it's not real clear what his motive is in this or what he's getting out of this, it is an interesting tactic to be taking people's fears away, which creates just an interesting challenge for Batman and Robin to have to deal with. It's the Scarecrow. He's developed a gas that takes away people's fear. No more fear? Cool. But as far as his redesign goes, I, it's, I, I, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? I've heard people talk about that they like this look of him much better. It's much darker. It's a little bit scarier. And I think that that was some of the concerns when they were on Fox in the original se series is that they made him very much like a straw man scarecrow and not as scary and creepy. He was just more gangly and goofy. There goes some of me again. He's darker and, and definitely scarier in this version, but I don't know. For me, it just, it doesn't, doesn't do much for me in this redesign. He's so different. I like the thin, slender kind of Jonathan Crane look to him. And this is, I don't know, just doesn't do it for me. And I don't even really care much for his new voice. Fear is the glue that holds society together. It's what makes people suppress their worst impulses. Fear is power. The other thing that's kind of neat in this episode is the Scarecrow being able to use 
the gas on Bruce Wayne, who, which by the way, I just have to say, for being a master detective and being able to fool everybody by putting a cowl on, this disguise that he uses as Bruce Wayne, not that convincing. Easy, easy. I was just looking for some loose cash. But it is interesting to see the very gas used on Bruce Wayne. So Batman is trying to fight against Scarecrow and trying to stop him from harming people. And the very thing that he's fighting has now been applied to him. Now, we saw this previous in Scarecrow's first appearance where they where Bruce Wayne was reliving or Batman was reliving the fears of disappointing his father and his family. But now we have a Batman without fear. This gas that takes away your fear, by any chance, did you breathe it? Yes, but I can handle it. I think that's an interesting dynamic to kind of explore in this episode because Batman is about driving fear into other people and we know what his greatest fear is. But we get to see what Batman would be like if he didn't have any fear. And what that exposes in his personality is the lack of fear of killing people and that being the very thing that separates him from the villains that he's fighting. So I thought that was an interesting choice to remove that from Batman and now see what we're dealing with of this very capable, vicious fighter that is about to kill these people. I, I can't. You kill me. Death is death. Does it matter who administers it? And of course, by doing that, it puts Robin in a position to sort of take charge of the situation and have to tie Batman up and go at it alone. And this is something that that I don't think has been dealt with much or in the original series, just because it was always a Batman and Robin and they had their differences and Batman would, would ha have tell Robin to stay at home or the Dick Grace and Robin to stay at home while they while he went out after the bad guys and Robin wouldn't listen. But we never... Not that I can remember that we've had this situation where now Robin's got to be in charge. Robin, the Tim Drake Robin, who is very young, has to be the one in charge and has to be the one to to tell Bruce Wayne or Batman what to do. And that, to me, creates another great dynamic in this episode. I told you, I can handle it. You can't! I'm not even afraid to kill. Kind of a general notes that, that has been throughout this series, but I really love in this new series the design of the cityscapes and the fact that they, and it was, it was very subtle before, but now every time we see the sky at night, it's just this blood red sharp look to the sky and it's a little unworldly, but it is really it's it's a cool look for Gotham City. I've got to stop the Scarecrow. And also in this series, we get to see a much grittier, darker Bruce Wayne. Kevin Conroy doesn't alter his voice as much when he's Bruce Wayne. And so I think that plays into this older Bruce Wayne, this more tarnished kind of character that even when he's not Batman, he still is a little gruff and a little tough with people. Mr. Gray. Now's not really the time. Oh, gonna try to intimidate me, huh? I also really enjoy the animation of the Batwing in this episode. That whole sequence where the Batwing is flying through the city is just incredible. It's really well done in this episode. But I also have a bone to pick with just TV shows in general, and movies for that matter, is it always seems like whenever the protagonist and the antagonist are on a train, and I get it, that's a great location for a final battle, but why is it that tracks are never finished in movies and TV? I don't think they run trains on tracks that aren't finished, because... It seems like a big hazard or big danger element. And that seems to come up very often that all of a sudden the train is run away and it can't be stopped. And oh, also the track isn't finished. I can't stop it. You're going to have to jump. So when it comes time to rank this episode, there's a little bit more competition out there as far as where this episode ranks. Although I'm not a big fan of the redesign of Scarecrow, I think that as far as Scarecrow episodes go, this is probably one of my more favorite just because it's a little bit different and it's less getting rich motivated. 
which I think fits with the Scarecrow a little bit better. So I ended up putting it at the number three spot in my list of favorite episodes so far. It falls just below Holiday Nights because even though those are simpler stories, I just like the way that that episode is laid out in having kind of these mini stories. Whereas in this one, it just doesn't feel like the Scarecrow does a whole lot in the episode. And so it's a longer story, but just as, not as much as is happening in it. But it does beat out Sins of the Father because although that is a story that is really an origin story and it was necessary to tell, it ends up just kind of serving that purpose rather than being a really entertaining story. Don't apologize. You were right. Yeah, but it was kind of scary. A little fear is a good thing. So let me know, what do you think of the new Scarecrow design? Are you of the group of people that like this look and this design of the character better? Or are you like me that just wasn't that excited about the effort to make him totally different? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, then all you have to do is hit subscribe because I have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. And this Thursday, I will be reviewing the episode, You Scratch My Back. As always, I'm Andy Cano. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.